Hi there. I'm thrilled to be back. It's great to see all of your heroes um, <laughs> coming back for more videos. Uh, thank you so much for, for asking me questions. I really appreciate it. I did not expect <laughs> to comment to, to comments in, in so little time, but here we are. Um, so following up on another question from um, another comment, how do I do REST authentication within Power Query? Uh, within Excel, um, it, it was under um, the Power Query for Mac uh, video, so I'm going to do this video on, on a Mac as well. Um, it's a bit different on Windows, uh, but you'll see there the why and um, yeah, I'll explain everything. So um, yeah, today is gonna be about um, today is gonna be about authentication. Um, let me see. Yeah, okay, fine. Here we are um, back. So I just found a really really nice website. It, it's called dummyjson.com, and what it essentially is, it is a web API. It's a REST API, which can be used to test applications, to test, to build frontends upon this API. Um, before you have an actual API, which you uh, will build for your application, you can just use this one, um, but it will serve as, as a demonstration here for, for this example. Um, so we have this endpoint, it's called dummyjson.com uh, slash users. Um, this is the uh, uh, REST endpoint and apparently, um, there are so uh, yeah, there's a list of users here. So we have the users field, and um, we have a username and a password here. Obviously, this is not a good pattern for any real API, but this is a demo API, so it's perfect. And we can use this username, and, username and password to create a token for ourselves, which we can use to retrieve a list of products. So if I go to dummyjson.com/auth/products, I can see this authentication problem, and this should go away once we specify the bearer token. Um, so let's jump straight into Excel and see how to how to deal with that. Um, yeah, so if I go to, if I copy and paste this and go to Excel, I can go to data and get data from Power Query, uh, blank query source, let's just keep it as it is to make this window just a bit bigger. And now my favorite, favorite keyboard shortcut, um, not from long ago, shift, control and M to open up this advanced editor back. Okay, perfect. We're back in the game. We're back in game. Um, all right. So the source will be the web dot contents, and the URL will be this this off products um, URL that, that I mentioned. So if I go with with just that and click on OK, and wait for it to load, so access to the resource is forbidden, um, and it looks like that. Power Query. Let me just let me just close that. So I just tested what I, what I was about to show you today uh, a bit before. So it looks like it cached the the um, privileges settings. So if you want to to delete any any um, any caching for, of of um, credentials or anything, um, just go to this to get data. Um, click on this drop down and click on data source settings. And it says we did not find any data sources in this workbook, which is which is interesting, um, but anyway, okay, let's go back. Uh, launch Power Query Editor, um, new query, blank query, next, all right, Command Shift M, do web.contents and specify the URL again. All right, so if I receive no error, then no error it is, that's fine. So access to this resource is forbidden, obviously, because we did, we did not specify the token. So the next, the, the first objective of this exercise will be, would be to um, get the token. And to get the token, we can use this. Um, let me go back to the documentation. We can use HTTPS dummy token uh, dummyjson.com slash off slash login, and we can specify the um, username and the password for uh, for a user here as a body. So to do that, let me just copy this um, endpoint and. Um, a good practice within Power BI is not to include um, usernames and passwords within the M code, but instead use parameters. So to create new parameters, I will click on manage parameters and a new parameter. And the first parameter will be user. Type will be text. 
and suggested value. That's okay. Current value will be, let me go back to the list of users and get this user from here, this username. So obviously this would be your username from your API. Uh, so I got the username. Next up is the pass. Pass type text, current value. Um, this one from password, obviously use your own here. Uh, click on okay. And there's that. So we can manage these usernames and passwords. Then later, it's very easy to take to change the values instead of going to query and and, um, and changing the code. You can just go here. It's a bit more user friendly, uh, but it doesn't matter. If you don't want to do that, do it that way, then uh, you can just create variables within the code. But again, I don't recommend it. Um, but that's fine. Okay. So next up is our token. So I'll first create a, um, a variable called token request um, because we'll first make a web request to the source and it will be web.contents and it's it's a tab instead of enter here to, to finish the sentences and it's a bit annoying but okay so to get the token we need to query um, this one so off login um, paste it here and now um, to specify the the body of the request, we can use um, um, uh, additional parameter, which I can pass to web.contents. I can use this, this record here. I can just create another record and then I can specify two uh, fields in this record. One will be headers and I'm gonna leave this one empty just for now. And the other one will be contents. Contents and contents will be JSON, but um, there's a special trick here we need binary JSON and the proper way to, to create the binary JSON. Um, let me just let me just show you how, how it is, how it um, what, what it says on Microsoft Docs. So if I go back here, if I go under um, Power Query Docs, I can see uh, you can see here Power Query M Web Contents. I just search for that uh, Web Contents function, and you can you can reach this documentation easily yourself as well. So there's an example too, which I'm really interested in. So as you can see, it uses web.contents and it has this URL, it has the headers and it has the content and there's this post data and we'll just copy this post data. So JSON from value is a function which takes in a record. As you can see, it has this, this square brackets and there are properties. So as in the specifications, we need to create our own JSON here, but instead of here X and Y, we'll, we'll provide username and password here just as the API wants us to. So let me copy that and let me go back to my editor. So the contents will be JSON from value. And um, this, this record is really handy here. So I can just type username, um, username and password. And if you don't know where this is coming from, let me just uh, refresh it for you. So if I go back here to authentication, there's this body and json.stringify is the function which converts JavaScript object into JSON. And we need to do something really similar inside Power Query. And inside Power Query, instead of json.stringify, we have um, json.fromValue. So these are um, really equivalent. And now we have this username and password fields um, and be sure to check your API's documentation to see how to which which fields to specify here. So okay, moving forward. And now here instead of this this um, this this decimal numbers, I can specify the real username. Since we created um, parameters for our username and password, um, and if you remember username uh, username's parameters name was just user, I can just type it here. So um, I can use user and then pass. Um, if you did not create parameters, you could just remove this user and use variables. Just just type in strings and um, let me let me paste in this um, this one. Yeah, I believe this is the username. So you can do that again. Um, I uh, I don't recommend doing that. Uh, you can just use user here uh, because this, this 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 is your parameter. It depends on how you named it. This is how I did. Um, but that's it. So contents JSON from value. That's that's all. Now headers is also an important field because we need to tell the API that we're specifying JSON. And as you can see here, this, this is exactly what's here in our, my documentation as well. So we need to specify this content type and this will be application JSON. 
But um, if we go to, so we're creating an object here. And if we just paste this content type, Power Query might, um, might complain that this minus does not agree with it. So um, there's a trick how to specify record fields which contain uh, spaces or any special characters. And in Power Query, you have to um, enter this hashtag and um, quote it. So add, add this hashtag in quotes, and then you can type in whatever you need here. So for our, for our example, this is content type, and then um, it's followed by equals, and we can just copy this application JSON from here and replace the quotes to make Power Query happy. So we have headers, content type, um, that's it. Let's see, let's see what we get. Um, let me just return this token rec here. No, not the entire thing, just, just this one. Yep, okay, okay. Of course, one comma too many. All right, it's not a valid content. Okay, yeah, because I misspelled it. Let me go back, advanced editor. Uh, it's not contents, it's actually content. Okay. And we got the JSON back. That's a good sign. Now we have to go back and actually de decode this JSON. So token JSON will be equal to json.document. Uh, this is another function which takes in JSON. I believe it's binary here, um, but it's actually just text. So I can put in the this, this token request um, and then return this token JSON. Click on OK. Of course, commas. And now what I get, I get this token here. So first step is already um, is uh, almost already behind us. <laughs> so we got the token here. Now we can just, uh, we can extract it from this object and we can do that. So the name of, of this field is token, it's lowercase. So we can go back to advanced editor. And now uh, you see now why, why I did not create a variable named token in the, in the beginning. Um, that's why. So I can create another variable called token, token, and that one equals to token JSON. And I can use this field accessor to extract token. So this is lowercase. There are no no um, there are no um, quotes here. And if I return the token now, let's see what I get. Of course, commas. <laughs> um, yeah, this is exactly the token that I need. So I can go back to my advanced editor now and let me construct the... So now what we need to do is pass this token to this web.contents function. And we need to do something similar to what we did here. So we need to, to um, add this, this object here. And um, we need to specify the headers again. So we can just copy and paste headers from here. Um, so, but it, we don't need to, to specify content type here. It's, it's not required since we're only getting the data, not posting anything. But what we need here is we need authorization um, header. Uh, and to see where this is coming from. Um, yeah, this will not be, let me see if I can, maybe I'll, I'll show you the documentation in the end. Um, but it's it's actually a common convention how to specify this this pair of tokens. So to specify the token, you need to to uh, to specify this authorization header, um, and this this is what I'll do. So and we need to prefix this header by creating a string, and I'll put down pair. Um, if you have any other prefixes, uh, of course, make sure to change that here. And um, I need to concatenate this, to, to add these strings up together. Uh, it's called concatenation. And to do that, to do that you can use this ampersand um, symbol. So bearer, ampersand, and then I can copy and paste this token variable here. And let's see what this does. So I'll replace this source here and I'll click on OK. <laughs> okay, it's not enough commas. Okay, now this is a really interesting error, which I thought I would not be able to overcome, but I found a solution. So it claims that it needs an on-premises data gateway to require to connect. Why, why do you need that? I mean, come on, why do you need the on-premises data gateway? I'm already on my machine here. So it turns out that this has to do with um, 
with permissions. So if I go to query and open this, this query again and go to a Windows machine, let me see if that works. So now I'm on Windows and I can go to data and uh, let's see. Yeah, get data and from other sources blank query. And I believe this seems since I'm on Windows, what I can do is, uh, so advanced editor to make this text a bit. No, <laughs> let's see if, if there's, uh, no, I thought I could make this text bigger. Anyway, um, let me just paste this code here. Uh, it looks like I did not copy it in the first place. Let me copy it again, paste it here. Um, Okay, I thought this was gonna work. It looks like it won't. Okay, it looks like I just needed to to reopen my um, my remote desktop. Let me try if these keyboard shortcuts work here. No. Oh, oh, here it is. All right. So on Windows, you have this really nice feature where you can uh, press on Control. Shift and plus and make this whole window bigger. So now you can see that the text a bit a bit better But essentially it's the same script and I can click on done just to test it out and You see on Windows you get a different error message and it's about uh, Privacy, so what you can do is just click continue and click on ignore here and uh, if you're doing a proper, uh, you might read about these privacy levels. Uh, if you want me to do some research instead of you just posting a com in comments and I can do this, the research for you, um, let me know if you want to learn more about this. But for now, I can just click on this, this, um, this stick here and click on save. Um, user matches, no exports, uh, of course, because I did not specify the, the username and password. But as you can see, we, we, get, we got past the, the error. So I can go back to my Power Query on a Mac, click on OK and do something similar. So I'll just ignore the, 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 the privacy settings. To do that, I can just click on Options here, go to Privacy and tick this box. So this is essentially the same box, but instead of um, instead of complaining about privacy, it complains that it doesn't have uh, on on premises data gateway. I mean, come on, Microsoft. <laughs> anyway, let's just click on OK and wait a bit. No, let's just click on refresh. All right, so we got the JSON back. Uh, so we got past that. Let's go back to advanced editor and parse this JSON. So we have the source here and I will create another variable called data and that equals to json.document. Uh, we already used that. I can use the source here and I can, um, I'll just return this data to see what I get. And voila, we got the data. We logged in using bearer tokens. Uh, we got the list of pro um, the, the list of products. Uh, it's here wrapped in, in, in this metadata. I can just click on that um, and click on to table. Uh, of course, the standard stuff, I can click here again to get all the, all the, the information um, here. If you wanted to see that, now you can. Um, but anyway, so this, this was how to, um, how to authenticate a, a REST API requests using bearer token, how to get the token, how to pass it um, to, to other requests. Um, yep, so here's how, how to do it. So if you want to see more videos like this, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below um, and let me know what, what specifically are you interested in. Um, then I can make a video about it and uh, everybody's happy that way. So thank you very much for watching. If you stayed this long, oh my God, this turned out to be a much longer video than I expected. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching Heroes and stay tuned for more. Bye.